everyone and welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MEC Business Management Webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Associates and joining me this evening all the way from the university is Dr. Jackie. Hi Dr. Jackie, welcome. Hi Helen and hi everyone who is listening to the session today. Well, I can see there's quite a few of uh, you that have joined us. And so let's actually get started with the webinar. Now, how we're going to do this webinar this evening is I'm just going to briefly introduce you to Stafford and what our role is uh, here in the Middle East. I'm then going to hand you over to Dr. Jackie, who's going to explain the program to you. And right at the end of the presentation, you will be able to type up any questions that you may have for Dr. Jackie or for myself. So you'll be able to see on your right hand side, there's a question box that you can type your questions. Um, what I will be doing as well is just looking at these questions and grouping them together. And what I mean by that is many of you might have the same, if not similar identical questions um, and we'll obviously put them all together and so that Dr. Jackie can actually answer those. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, who is Stafford Associates? Well, Stafford Associates has been in the Middle East for over 20 years and our function here is basically to assist students throughout their um, application process. Now, we are currently the resource centre for six UK universities, one of which is Edinburgh Napier University. And we are actually functional across four continents. Now, Stafford does offer a variety of programmes, starting from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, MECs, right through until doctorates. So we actually have programs for every single person's needs. Um, our role here, as I said, is to assist students throughout the registration process, but we do also offer academic and administrative support. I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Jackie. As I said, she'll chat to you about the program, and then I'll see you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you, Dr. Jackie. Okay, thank you so much for that, Helen. And as I said, thank you everyone for coming along this evening, giving up your evening to hear a bit more about the programme, the MSc Business Management Programme at Edinburgh Napier University. And really what I would like to do today is to emphasise to you some of the benefits and um, some of the reasons why you might want to choose us um, to support you in receiving your um, postgraduate qualification. Um, just a little bit um, to say about myself. Um, I've been at Edinburgh Napier now um, for over 13 years. Um, I have a PhD in Information Systems Management. Um, I have qualifications in education and in fact I have quite a few degrees. And what you will find is most of the educators who teach you on the MSc Business Management Programme similarly have a wealth of qualifications and also business experience which they'll be able to bring and support you with your learning as you move through the programme. So my specialist area is looking at managing innovation. I also teach undergraduate graduate students creativity and very interested in entrepreneurial mindset and as I said before online learning is something I am very passionate about and I'm actually the school academic lead for online learning and I think that it's a very positive area for everyone to advance and think about in terms of their own education is to study online because it allows you to do that while at the same time engaging in the workplace as well and taking care of other needs that you have. Okay, so just wanted to say a little bit about um, where we are. So we are, Edinburgh Napier is in Scotland and Scotland is just off continental Europe and Scotland is the top one third of, of the map of the UK. So you can see the UK here. Um, Scotland has around um, nearly six million 
people. Um, and we have a broad education. So we have lots of universities um, teaching a range of subjects. But in terms of Edinburgh Napier and our unique um, selling point is that we're very employment focused. And what we find is that people pursuing a master's with us, particularly our online students, find that after they've graduated, they tend to get promoted in their positions because of the wealth of skills and knowledge and experience that they've gained while they've been studying with us. So we hope that will be true for you as well. So that's where we are. We're in Scotland. Um, in terms of Scotland, um, some of you may recognise some of the scenery about Scotland because you'll see it in the Harry Potter movies. Um, and you might also have heard of our famous Loch Ness Monster, um, which is um, qu quite famous around the world. And often we get lots of tourists who come just to see the Loch Ness Monster. Um, so it was um, considered one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Um, and we're based in Edinburgh, which is the actual capital of Scotland. So let me just show you a little bit about that. Um, Edinburgh is a really exciting, vibrant city. It is only one hour away from London. So often when people come to visit um, the UK, they will fly up um, for a few days to see Scotland and travel round. We have the Highlands. Um, we have lots of really interesting things to see and lots of interesting landmarks um, that you wouldn't find elsewhere in the UK. Um, Edinburgh is quite an ancient city and obviously we have a very imposing castle which sits on a rock and it's the most beautiful sight to see when the sun's shining. Um, Edinburgh was voted um, the best UK city for the past three years so that's quite an accolade for us to have. We're actually also home to more FTSE 100 tech startup companies than any other UK city outside London. We have a really good financial sector so we're a thriving vibrant city. We're home to the largest arts festival in the world. And some of you may have heard of that, the International Festival and the Fringe Festival as well. And they take place in August. So you're welcome to come and experience them as well if you come up for graduation. And graduation tends to take place at the end of June and the beginning of July. OK, so that's Scotland for you. Um, so now, thinking about the actual um, campus itself, um, and thinking about the university, we started off really as a technical college, and that ties us back again to what I said about employability and making sure people have the skills to make a difference in their own workplace. So that was started in 1964. Um, several decades later, we became a university. Um, and today, in 2018, we are Edinburgh Napier University. Um, well known throughout the country. And we're a university with passion, we have drive, we're very ambitious for our students, um, we're very innovative and we're incredibly inclusive. Um, we have over 6,000 international students throughout the world studying with us. So very much about supporting people to fulfill their ambitions, but remaining in their own countries. Okay, so we are, we've been recognised as the number one in the UK for nurturing student talent. And this was given to us a wonderful accolade by the Guardian University Guide in 2017. And um, we just, their perception was that we added value to the whole student experience while you were studying with us. So that's fantastic. We also have a lot of other um, accolades that have been given to us. For instance, we have five QS stars for our teaching, employability, and of course, as I mentioned before, our international outlook and um, the fact that many of our students are actually studying with Edinburgh Napier, but they live overseas. Um, we're the winner of the Queen's Anniversary Prize in 2015, and um, that was provided for our work with um, timber and house building. Uh, we, we have around about 9,000 people who have graduated from Hong Kong. So that's quite a lot. Um, and right now we have you know, well over 5,000 students studying overseas, as I said, so lots of students um, studying with us. Our research is viewed as helping to shape the world around us. We're really about problem solving 
And when you study with us, you realize that, that we teach you to think critically, look at the world and think how you can improve it for both yourself, but also for your employer and for your society. Um, 95% of our graduates immediately leave Edinburgh Napier in employment. And when you look at online, actually the figures are much higher. In fact, most students studying with us online are actually in full-time employment. Um, another great reason to study with us is, is to, that we have 350 startups. So we've supported people with ideas to make a difference um, in their own economies. Um, when you think about Edinburgh Napier University as a university, um, there's actually six schools. Um, and with the Craig Lockett campus, we're the only um, campus with just one school, and we're the business school. And we're on a we're on a slight slope and a very impressive view we've got over the whole city. And you can actually see a picture of, of, of our campus here. We have a, a quite an old prestigious building, uh, well known throughout the world. Um, and we've built a new state of the art, quite exciting um, lecture theater and, and rooms for students to study right next door to it. And of course, when you graduate, you'll, become, you'll come and visit us and you'll get to see this very lovely, imposing building itself. We also have two other campuses. One is further out and supports um, nursing and other scientific endeavors. And we also have um, the Merkison campus, which again is our campus, which is near the town center. So really three different campuses, but the students all get very similar experiences in all campuses. Very exciting um, to think that we actually support and we nurture 9,500 students approximately from more than 130 countries wide world. And actually, I think that's probably increases every every term we take in new students, we find students are coming from different countries. Um, we have on campus with us 13,500 students, and of those, um, a large majority are actually studying in our business school. So they're actually studying on campus here with myself and my colleagues. Um, we have, as I said before, 6,000 students, both on, and that includes the online, there's about 1,500, and also um, around 5,000 as well who are studying overseas. Okay, so that's some, some of the background about us and what we do. Um, one useful point is to understand about Global Online. So you will see that when you enroll for the course, Global Online, that's our branding. And it's really about programs that are under the Global Online brand. We've ensured that they're flexible. They can allow you to fit in your study with your personal work and life commitments. So we'll see that a lot of the modules that you study, the actual assessments are due in at the end of the study, even though you've gone through 14 weeks of learning. And we're really about making sure that higher education is accessible to people everywhere. We have lots of lovely little features. Here you can see the map feature that allows us to see who's studying on our modules and be able to connect together. And we also have an Ask Ben, which is a frequently asked database that's available on all your modules. We're actually quite global, as I said, and you can actually see um, the impact of that on this um, map. Um, we're spread out through the Americas, where we've got a lot of students in Europe, and then as you move towards the Middle East, quite a few students throughout, um, uh, throughout the Middle East, and we've got some in Asia and Australasia. So reaching, far reaching, um, I think it's like 120,000 graduates globally. So that's quite a lot of students, um, sorry, alumni to tap into and people to connect with. In fact, I was speaking to some students about what they did when they first enrolled and they actually connected with some alumni first who were alumni in their own country to ask them lots of questions about the programme. So lots and lots and lots of people to talk to. Um, I want to move on now to give you a bit of information about the actual programme itself. And this is the MSc Business Management Programme. There is, you can study either a general, um, the general program, or you can study some specialist routes. And I'll show you those specialist routes on the next slide. But let me just tell you a little bit about the program itself and the 20 credit modules and what you'll study. So you get quite an exciting mix actually with the modules. And um, you get to study, for example, one of the core modules is leadership. 
strategy and innovation. So how do you use leadership to be able to bring about innovation in an organization? You also, and a lot of people do actually experience this in their own organizations, you also explore organizational change and how best to manage that for the people in the workplace. So a really important module, I think, and a module that will equip you for the future. We have economics, so we're looking at um, the fin we're looking at the, the situation of your economies throughout the world, but also we narrow in in that module to also look at the finance in the firm. So a very interesting module that combines both economics and finance. We also have a module called Creating Business Excellence in Marketing. This is a fantastic module. It takes you through the ideas of a balanced scorecard. What should a business that's creating excellence look like? And how can the marketing function support that? So I'm sure you'll enjoy that module. My own module is also taken on the generalist route and it's managing innovation. And again, we get the opportunity to explore how best to manage innovation and the process of innovation in, in an organization. You can also get the, the fantastic opportunity to study contemporary issues in strategic management. So you get to debate and discuss some of the more contemporary ideas that um, have been written about and really just apply them to the real world situation. So a really good module there. Then once you've done your core modules, you move on to a research skills module. And in that case, you get to choose a topic that you are most interested in and you get to write um, a plan, an outline of how you're going to research that particular topic, whether it be around leadership styles or the management of innovation in a particular sector, you write your final dissertation on it. So you have a couple of exit points. Um, you can exit with just um, an individual module, so you get a certificate of credit. However, most people either move on to do a postgraduate certificate, which is 60 credits, or they exit as a postgraduate diploma 120 without doing the dissertation or the research skills modules, or they do the full MSc. And normally we would have most people move on to the full MSc. We've had our 56 graduations and we've only been running this module for a few years now. And we actually have triple the amount of students studying online as we do in our face-to-face. -face. One thing to flag up is these modules have been written by the same academics who we teach you on campus. You'll see videos of the same academics that the students on campus see and you'll be supported by academics who have all had experience of working with us on campus. We have 10 different routes through the MSc Business Management. So there is MSc in Banking, which is fantastic if you yourself have a career in banking and you just wish to specialise in that, but also learn some general management skills. We have an MSc in Entrepreneurship, and that will equip you to set up your own business and also equip you to be more of an entrepreneur, someone that makes significant change within your own organisation. We have an MSc in Events Management, if you're interested in events. We have an MSc Finance, um, which covers areas such as global finance and finance from management decisions. So obviously, these are just the optional modules you would replace managing innovation and contemporary issues and strategic management for these two modules as you move through your specialist route. In terms of MSc HRM, are really good for those who wish to understand HRM in an international context, human resources, and are involved in a human resource role in their organisation or who would like to be. The MSc Hospitality and Tourism, again, looking at event management and issues in hospitality. The MSc IS Strategy and Innovation Systems and Strategy and Governance is one of our newer degrees. However, actually, it's it's been celebrated um, in bestdegrees.com and it has a rating of 37 in Europe. So already this small program is um, making a significant um, impact in terms of people who wish to study strategy and governments. And the MSc Business Management, Logistics and Supply Chain Management, again, allows you to study two excellent modules. You can look at global logistics and supply chain and project management. The MSc Marketing and Sales allow you to look at global marketing and again, international sales management. And finally, the, the MSc Business Management and Project Management 
allows you to look at both project management and tie that back to the management of innovation. So there you go, specialist routes through the programme, or if you prefer the original structure, which I showed you in the earlier slide, you can do that as well, and that's the MSc Business Management. There is tons of interactive online resources as soon as you log into your module. But what we would suggest is, and what we'd encourage, and what we'd like you to do is, when you first start out, you need to go on the Global Online Induction. The Global Online Induction will tell you some key information. It will tell you information about regulations. It will tell you information about what it's like to study as a student online. And it will just tell you lots of um, information around Edinburgh Napier University. Um, we also have a programme page called Global Online, well, this one is my programme page, Global Online MSc Business Management. This is an excellent resource for all of us. So having gone through the induction, you move on to the programme page and you get an opportunity to meet those who have joined a cohort with you at the same time. And I always have a session in the first couple of weeks where I get everyone together and we can all talk about the programme and you can ask me any questions because sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a few months since you signed up for the programme and when you start. So you might have more questions by then. We also on that page have discussion forums, you have a student rep who, who will take any queries as well and support you and he's also been known to mentor people if that's what you like. So reach out to other people both in your own country, you can see that on the map, people from other countries and people who are maybe further along in their degree process. Everyone is open and willing to be supportive of you in your learning journey. In terms of managing innovation, which is the module I teach, um, or any of the modules, they all have their own homepage, um, which you can work through the material. And there's a set structure to the material, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. What I'd like to do, though, for a moment is just tell you a little bit about the structure. How do you study the programme? You're encouraged to study up to two modules per trimester, but you can if you want to, and if it fits in better with your life, then you may decide to just study one module and move through the programme that way. So you will go through the induction, you'll go through the programme pages and meet other students, and you'll also study on your module. You also get access to other resources, such as the library at Edinburgh and Napier. You even have a library card sent out to you, so if you want to use that, that's absolutely not a problem. And you need to just key in that library number when you go into the library. Um, every week we have weekly surgery sessions on your module, which will allow you to talk to other students and also talk to your specific tutor who supports you. So lots of different things. We also have global online support, which are a group of support administrators who are there at hand to answer any queries and their turnaround for answering queries is only two or three days. So very fast response to any queries received. In terms of the standard of what the modules look like, all the modules have very similar um, look and feel. You have a short welcome video from your module leader. You have 10 subject specific units. You have a learning outcome which explains what you should learn in each unit. You have a video that's been made by the module leader. You have prescribed readings. You also have assessment questions to test what you've learned, but also and I think this is important for when you're learning a, a, that you want to apply for your work, you have reflective exercises. So you actually get to think about how you would apply this in your working environment. You have an end of unit summary as well as an end of unit progress test that you get that you are able to um, go through. And so your final assessment is usually in nearly all the modules, 90% a written report or a written case study, and 10% comes from those end of unit progress tests, which you will have done as you move through the, pro the module that you are taking. We we'll also provide further reading for you to explore all the to topics covered, and they're all available online. So there's also discussion topics where you get to chat to other students about the key areas that you're learning about. There's case studies offered with outline solutions. Um, and you know what your assessment is from the very first day that you log in. So you can plan your time and you can identify when you need to be working um, on your coursework. 
Um, and as I said, we have these weekly virtual office hours where you get to engage with other students. Calendar of your academic year, pretty structured. There's three trimesters and every year they have 15 weeks and your coursework is due in four, um, week 14 of all of those semesters. In trimester one, you'll do um, one or two modules that will be worth 20 credits. Similarly, in trimester two, you'll do um, another two modules, same as trimester three. And then in trimester four, once you've done all your top modules, you're able to move on to your research, um, you're able to move on to your research module. And then you do your final dissertation. Um, you get access to module material on the VLE, access to module study guides, revision guides, and submission of final assessment. So here is the actual structure of support. You can actually see there's three levels of support as you move through the program. At the very top, there's some activity with your program team and your, or your program leader. There's a welcome. We, I check back in to see how you're getting on near to the end of the program. And usually there's some kind of event in the middle. And um, we also have global online support. They provide academic skill support. So you can see that we put on weekly sessions. You do not have to attend all of these sessions. They are all recorded and then they're made available for you to watch pretty much immediately after the sessions. But we do sessions like using the library, critical thinking, um, understanding feedback, um, SE support, lots of really useful things for you as you move through the program. But also on your own module, you'll have a module leader and a module tutor. So you'll, you'll have an introduction to the program and week, uh, to the module in week two. And um, you'll have module activities and they'll be spaced out on your module. This is just an exemplar um, and it really depends on the topics of the modules, but you'll be given assignments to do that you'll go off and you prepare for and then bring back to your weekly sessions. Again, those weekly sessions, if you're too busy at work and you can't attend, then they are recorded and um, they're captured in some way, whether it's in text or it's actual video recording and they're shared with you. So everything that we offer, again, is available and you can see it all on the program. It's really useful for you. And of course, coursework submitted in week 14. So I'm just I'm just trying to get it to move on because it's uh, there we go. OK, just a couple of little things about the actual modules themselves. As I said, they all have an introductory video. Very important that we have an Edinburgh clock so that you know exactly what time it is in Edinburgh. Um, as I said earlier, there's 11 units of learning and you just walk your way through these units at your own pace. But actually, you'll find that the, in terms of, for instance, my module, I've broken it down so the learning takes over, takes place over one week. So one unit in my module, at least, equates to one week of learning. Um, and as I said, there's lots of progress tests and self-assessments to support it. This is actually a screenshot of my current um, module. So here we have academic discussion forums, student chat forums. As you can see, they're quite well used. So there's two unread posts there, one unread post for the virtual office forums. We have weekly WebEx and transcripts available for everyone and lots of different opportunities to interact. In terms of um, responses, they'll be captured in a workbook. Um, so you'll be able to, t to, to, to print this workbook off and take it with you. Um, but also what's great about the workbook is as you move through the program, you'll be able to go back into each module and see some of the key information um, that you have written about in terms of organisations, in terms of your thinking. And in fact, some of that may support you when you're trying to choose a topic for your final dissertation. OK. Um, in terms of roles and in terms of supporting you, we have, as I said, a module leader. We often have an online tutor who provides the academic leadership and support. We also have global online support who are the administrators. They're a dedicated 
um, non-academic support, but they're available and they will contact you if they think you're having any issues and they will also answer any queries that you've got. So they are definitely the first people to speak to. So that's why I've put their email on this slide and you can use them for any communication. And you're given a university email so that you can talk to them as well. Okay, just just short piece on entry requirements. Obviously, we're looking for um, an undergraduate degree um, at two two or above, but the, obviously there'll be equivalents in your own country. Um, we are looking for applicants from any subject discipline. In fact, what we find is many of the people studying with us are actually changing career. They're moving into a management role um, and they might have had another background, maybe information systems, or they might be in HR. So they're looking for that managerial um, opportunity uh, to discuss this and learn about that. We do sometimes consider lesser qualifications. In fact, if you've worked for a certain amount of time at a certain level, we will, of course, allow you on the programme and support you through that. Um, there is an English language requirement. If your first language is not English, you may well need to undertake an approved English language test. Um, but also, there's an opportunity if your first degree was um, in an English language university, then you may well not need to do that. Here's some just a range of student feedback that I got from my module. This is taken from a few years ago, but they were actually all from the same term. So as you can see, students commented on the excellent feedback, the excellent support, the excellent learning materials, the pleasure of meeting and working with us for the support given, um, the way that they were able to apply it in their own organization, um, and, and just the fact that we could bring the classroom to their living room. So lots of really positive feedback. Um, so just kind of to finish up, want to say just a little bit about how much this costs you. You can see here that fantastic of Stafford, there's an exclusive Stafford grant to you in American dollars of a thousand dollars. There is also a fee, but it's payable in monthly installments for this degree um, in American dollars again of 8,960, whereas VAT is applicable in the UAE and the KSA. And for students residing in Africa as well, um, then again, it's $8,500 payable in monthly installments. And we really do hope that you'll come and join us. 7th of May is the application deadline. So not long, but we're hoping that you'll be able to fill in the short um, application form and join us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand back to Helen. She's going to take, hi Helen, I can hi. see you now. She's going to take any questions from you. Um, I'm here though, you can always drop me an email, jbrody at Napier AC UK. When you're on the program, remember my email. I've got several students who email me very regularly. We have lovely conversations about the program and about their own careers. So you're welcome to do that. You're welcome to even start the conversation before you start. Um, the program, not a problem. And here's Helen, and Helen's going to take some questions. Okay, thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jackie. That was very informative. Okay, so we've now opened up the uh, question box. So please do start typing in your questions so that we can actually get uh, Dr. Jackie to, to answer them. Okay, um, I do see a question. Um, Dr. Jackie, thank you for the informative um, the informative webinar. Um, if I happen to fail an assessment, um, can I redo that? Of course you can. Everyone has a second opportunity to do their assessment if they've failed that. And the dates will be provided to you by Global Online Support. Um, you'll be contacted shortly after um, not achieving the pass rate on your module and then we'll support you through your reassessment. Okay. And uh, will my degree certificate state online distance learning? No, it will not. You will graduate on exactly the same day as 
all the MSc Business Management students. In fact, you might be standing next to an MSc Business Management student who was on campus. So your degree certificate looks identical. You can refer people to your graduation video. It's available on YouTube. And um, the program, nothing states online. The degrees are identical. Online is just the mode that you're studying. It's not part of the degree certificate. Okay, and uh, the next question, oh, they're coming in through quite quite, free, quite quickly. Um, okay, so the next question is, can I complete this program in a lesser period? Um, well, I think 21 months is the guide that we have for you. You may get exemptions, but that would be dependent on someone looking at what you've done before. So you need to actually put in um, an application before we could consider that. But as a, as a guide, 21 months seems to be the shortest period that everyone completes it in. Um, so hopefully that'll be okay for you because it's not that long, really. Okay, hey, can I attend my graduation and how do I get my degree certificate? Okay, so you can attend yeah, graduation. I can hear this question. Do you want me to say? Yes, um, super, super. Carry of on. course, you can attend your, your degree um, ceremony. We'd love you to come over. Um, in fact, we have a we tend to have a party for you the day before um, the graduation ceremony and all the global online students come together and the head of international comes to meet you. So it's a fantastic day. We love you to be here. You just have to make sure you apply for your visa in good time. Um, I had one student that had a problem with his visa and he arrived the day after graduation. So he still came up to see us. He still got his picture taken, but he never actually um, attended graduation. So yes, if you don't attend graduation, you'll get your certificate a few weeks after graduation. But if you do, you get it on the day. Excellent. And the next question from Amir, how do you differentiate between an IS management versus a global marketing degree? Um, I think you, this is the, you, both degrees will prepare you to be a manager. This just allows you some extra knowledge and understanding around information systems. And in fact, if you think about it, 80 credits will also be research methods will you explore IS, and then, and then you'll have your dissertation as well. Um, so quite a lot of time will be spent drilling down, looking at an area of information systems that is of, of interest to you. Whereas if you were doing business management with marketing, again, your dissertation will be focused on a marketing area and you'll get to focus in on that. So quite a big chunk of your degree will be around that, but it will be an area of your own interest. Excellent. And am I permitted an extension on my assignment if I need it? Yes, of course. Um, you can get up to 10 working days. Um, what, what you have to do is make sure that you request it in good time. Um, so if you know that, that, that something's happening in your life that's going to stop you from submitting, then as long as you give us good notice, then you'll know in advance. But if you are too late um, and, 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 and something happens suddenly, then of course we can also support you that way. You just have to get in touch with us and there's different forms to fill in. So yes, you can get extensions, you can get retrospective extension, and you can also get a deferral of, it, of assessment as well. So that allows you to defer for one trimester and then do the assessment. We have tons of support. We have lots of different ways to help you. So never worry about something like that. Are there any bodies that accredit the MSc? There is no bodies that accredit the MSc. We are working towards AACSB, but by the time you start and by the time you finish, we won't have achieved that process. However, it is recognized by quite a lot of governments throughout the world, and we've organized um, to do that. But at the moment, no, it's, it's not an accredited program. Okay, and James's question, can I apply on the basis of my extensive work experience? 
Of course you can, James. Um, you'll, you'll meet a lot of other students who have done exactly the same. They've maybe worked in the industry, maybe worked 10 years, and, and, and part of that will have been a very senior management role. So, excellent. We would love you to do that rather than starting at the undergraduate, the BA business management and doing that for a year, which part of that you might find boring. Here, we want you to have that intellectual challenge. So, of course, we'd love you to come on and, and go straight on to the MSc. You, of course, have to apply and admissions will look at your application and refer them to me if there's any questions. Okay. And what exactly is covered in the induction? The induction is to allow you to get experience of understanding the regulations in the university because that's quite important. You're becoming a citizen, part of our bigger family, so you have to know how to behave, the rules and the regulations. And um, You also find out about studying online, so you'll be given information about that. And there will also be some guidance around actually um, studying your module. So lots and lots of guidance, but it won't take you very long to do, just maybe a day or so to go through the material. And it means that if you've got any questions, Questions, you can ask questions then rather than just starting your module and getting lost in the module, getting lost on the program. It's there for you, it's a guide for you, and it's and we strongly advise you to do it. And in fact, um, there's little badges for parts of it, and, and people really enjoy getting a little badge on their Moodle page to say they've done it. Okay, and um, Omar is planning a trip to the UK. Can I then visit my tutors on the campus while I am you might, on the campus? Yeah. If, if they're available, you can contact them as long as you give them a few days notice. I did have one group of students who, who'd come all the way from Africa, but they hadn't told me. And it was almost seven o'clock at night and I was leaving the building. So I only had about 10 minutes to speak to them. Um, but yes, I've had people come in the afternoon. I've shown them around campus. Um, it's a fantastic place to visit. Um, we have a War Poets collection. I can take you to the library. You can meet the librarian. If your tutor's on campus, you can have a few words with them. Um, yes, several students do come and see me, so it's not a problem. But just make sure that you've told the tutor in advance because a lot of the tutors are busy. They're, they're, they're teaching. They're teaching overseas. They're teaching on campus. But yes, come. Come by all means. We'd love to see you. Excellent. And our mayor's question is, does World Education Services recognize the BS degree? Sorry, I, I, does, does what recognize? It's World Education Services. Do they recognize I, I, the BS degree? That's not something that I'm aware of. So maybe it's something we can follow up, Helen, if you take a note of that question. It's not Absolutely. something that I've heard of. Amir, do get in touch with me tomorrow and uh, we'll be able to, to give you some guidance on that. Okay. Um, Amir's other question was, how technical is the IS management degree? Um, and is there any hands-on technical exercises that may need to be done? Um, you've got to understand that it's primarily a business management degree. So in terms of IS, I don't think it would, it, it's not what you would expect an IS um, professional to do on a full IS degree. So that's what I would say is um, it will get, technical because it is taught by the computing school and it is taught by an information um, systems educator and um, but if you want me to find out if you again you want us to find out a bit more about those actual newer modules then we can put you in touch with the actual module um, leader and he can give you some information and um, because that's how with my knowledge I haven't actually looked at or the, the technical exercises, but my understanding was it was fairly straightforward and it didn't look like it was very technical. And again, that opportunity to look in depth at a topic of your area will really inform your practice when you do your, your, your MS and um, when you're in the workplace. Absolutely. And uh, a question from, uh, from Amar. If I do exit the program with 60 credits, will mm -hmm. I be um, will I be invited to the graduation and get a certificate? 
Yes, I mean, people do come and get their PG cert. Um, I got a PG cert from Napier in Teaching and Learning, and then I went on and got my master's in blended online education. I'm, I'm certain that you, you, it would be an opportunity. Most people, um, it, it, it's in the program, but most people actually just receive that. They get that sent out. There is a specialist um, gown. It looks slightly different from the from the master's gown when you graduate with a PG cert. Um, it's not as big a stripe of colour, basically. But it's very hard to tell the PG certs, the PG diplomas and the MSCs. Um, and they look very lovely in the photographs. And uh, this is a very interesting question from James. Can I apply for a double major? Um, and in other words, and also can I transfer from one major to another? You will be doing your MSE um, in, in, in business management with your specialist roots. Um, and then that, that will be what you do. Um, you will not be able to transfer to another program like MSc Construction Management because those two programs don't have any shared common um, modules. So no, you wouldn't be able to. You may be able to transfer onto the MBA program, but again, you would need to speak to the MBA director because there's common modules on that. Absolutely. And uh, will the university be able to give me documentation um, to attend the graduation, especially if I need to get a visa? Yes. Yeah, so um, Global Online Support are happy to provide you with any written letters that you need um, to help support your application for a visa. And, and as I said, we'd love to see you at graduation. It's such an amazing day. And the day before is amazing as well because we get to meet everyone. And um, they get to meet each other because remember, often they've been studying the same modules online for nearly two years. And then they get to meet in person. So it's quite emotional, actually. And what we actually find is for some of the students, their own country um, newspapers actually record their visit and everything. So it's quite exciting for everyone concerned. Fantastic. Okay, well, Dr. Jack, it seems that uh, we've got no more questions. Mm -hmm. um, I think huh? it's a lot that we've actually asked. I've managed to group them all together. Yes, so, fantastic. Thank Thanks, again. Ellen. Thank you very much for joining us. And again, thank, thank you, you everyone on, on this webinar this evening. And uh, as Dr. Jackie said, uh, we have the 7th of May as our application deadline. So if you mm -hmm. do really want to start your program now, please get your applications in um, as soon as possible. Have a chat to the Stafford consultants and we will get that very important unconditional offer for you. Okay. Uh, okay, good everyone. All right. Good night. I hope to see everyone on on uh, uh, um, beginning on the seventh of, of of the fourteenth of May <laughs> when the program starts. Okay, but if not, hopefully see you in future terms. Thank you, Helen. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.